this is how I work with succulents. Roots, for the most part, are optional. So when I shop at the nursery, I count heads. The part of the succulent that I like is the pretty top part. As long as you don't set the plant material in standing water and you don't water heavily um, until for, for a week to 10 days, the plants will be fine. They will root, pack the soil back in around your cuttings. If the succulents will stand, you've done your job. It's extremely important when you're designing a succulent pocket garden or really any garden is to create elevation. We need to see movement, um, hills and valleys. Nothing is more boring than a flat expanse of land with plants coming out of it. Now I'm gonna build up this area before I plant it so that the succulents are more noticeable. So I'm going to take this Echeveria, pop it out of its can when we plant perennials and annuals and, and trees. The general rule of thumb is go as deep as the root ball and twice as wide. No such rules apply with succulents. Yeah, I think I want mom as my centerpiece. I'm just going to clean up the dead leaves on the bottom. There's still some roots attached. That's great. Don't ever start your arrangements right smack dab in the center. It looks, it looks fake. Some other succulents that I have pulled out of the garden. I'm going to clean them up, take pieces off. and tuck them in around our starter. And this is how I get, I get the mosaic. By taking cuttings, I can use plants in a more dense presentation. If you don't like something the way, where it is, you can always pick it up and move it to another location. I want height, so I'll take this little piece of Senecio and pop it in here. This is another cute piece. There we go. I don't need stem. Um, I oftentimes will remove bottom leaves just to give me an anchor with which to set the cutting down into the soil. These succulents root and they start to grow and throw off pups. They just make room for each other. It's the most beautiful thing. My garden at home is, is filled with cuttings that have matured into beautiful succulent specimens. The little blue spruce. So there's no reason why rosemary can't thrive in a succulent garden because it has much of the same um, water requirements. Uh, it can survive for long periods of time without any irrigation, as can succulents. Take this guy out of the ground. You know, and, and if you want to dig a hole and plant the whole thing, you sure can. But my point is, you don't have to. So why do it? This is so much easier and more fun. Oh, look at that little pup coming up amongst the rosemary. That's cute. I like that. I guess the idea behind my aesthetic is uh, not to see any dirt. A hole right here that's bugging me. So I've decided to take some of this aloe blue elf and fill it in into that hole so we can expose a little bit of the trunks and I can choose a nice cutting. Let's see. Here's a good one. I'm just going to reach in there. There. Now, I'm not even going to backfill. I don't have to. I'm going to leave those just like that. They're basically just sitting on soil. They're going to harden off. They're going to root. And in time, they're going to grow. I'm going to start tucking my cuttings in. 
with the idea that I might move them. But this is kind of the natural growing habit of this particular Echeveria too. They cluster and I love that about them. So I'm going to work with that. Remember we've got this downhill slope. So this gives the, I think, it kind of gives the illusion of water, of movement, to have these guys just coming down stream. We started with the larger one at top and then descending into the smaller. Here's the crassula. It gives us a little bit of height, which I think we need right here. So just a little misting uh, once a week until these babies start to get their legs, which will take a couple of weeks. And then you can rely on your drip or your whatever irrigation method you choose. The plants with the thinner, more delicate leaves tend to struggle a little bit as cuttings and are best planted in the shade or in an exposure that isn't in full sun all day long. This is a fantastic plant. Looks like something right out from under the sea and when stressed. And I don't know of any situation that's more stressful than having your head cut off. This is going to color up to be red. Now from a design standpoint, we've created a contrast here which I'm feeling like I need to pick up in another part of the presentation. So I'm going to take some of these crassula and I'm going to pop them in up here too. So we have our two presentations of crassula. We need a third. So I'm going to tuck some more in right here. Take this wonderful piece of crassula and I'm going to tuck it, dig a little hole and tuck it right in there. Softens things up a little bit. Well, I have a, have a little, I see a little dirt showing, we can't have that. So I'll tuck another piece right there. There we go. I'm going to bring that crassula down, pops them in right here. I'm going to take some of this wonderful Echeveria blue sky. Why in the world is she cutting up a plant that is already packed so beautifully and so tight? Well, because I like to incorporate other plants in amongst the individuals. Now, what do you do with the plant that's had its heads cut off? You just set it in a nice shady spot in the garden and wait for it to regenerate. Remember, there are no straight lines in nature. Everything needs to be odd numbers, ones, three, fives, slightly left or right of center. And these succulents are also going to shrink up a little bit working with the cutting, which is another reason why you want to pack them in tightly. I see the beginning here at the rosemary, and then tapering down to the front, and I'm going to end it, curve it around right about here. So now I am looking for slightly smaller specimens, just for fun, and as an anchor, I'm going to take this wonderful little agave. Be careful when you work with the agaves because they bite. I'm going to clean off some of the soil. Why am I doing that? Because I'm lazy and I don't want to dig a hole that deep and the plant doesn't really care, so why not? Push off some of the, some of the soil, trim up some of those longer roots. I'm going to backfill that hole just a little bit. When I stood up and looked at the presentation from a different angle, I realized it was screaming for sticks on fire. Ta-da! This is Palm Springs Gold 3 quarter inch gravel. So you want to make sure that you put on a good inch and a half to two inches of rock. It prevents soil erosion. 
helps retain moisture and water. It also works as a natural barrier for weed growth and doesn't blow away like mulch or wood chips. some sedum brevifolia right here growing in Judy's garden. If sedums will tolerate water better than some succulents and actually really look their best and prefer water in the hotter months. You can see perhaps the little red roots starting on the stem through that brevifolia root system and tuck my confusum right in the hole. Some contrasting rock just creates more layers, more texture, more interest. And that is our finished succulent pocket garden.